സായ് വിഷ്ണു പ്രിയ വിഠൽ എൻഡോക്രൈൻ ആൻഡ് ബ്രസ് സർജൻ ഫ്രം അപ്പലോ മെയിൻ ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽസ് ഗ്രീൻസ് റോഡ് ചെന്നൈ സോ നൗ വി വുഡ് ലുക്ക് ഇൻ ടു തൈറോഡക്ടമി വെൻ ആൻഡ് ഫോർ ഹൂം ഷുഡ് വി ഡു സോ തൈറോഡക്ടമി ആ സച്ച് വോട്ട് ഡസ് ഇറ്റ് മീൻ ജസ്റ്റ് മീൻസ് റിമൂവൽ ഓഫ് ദ തൈറോയിഡ് ഗ്ലാൻഡ് സോ ഐ ഗെസ് യു വുഡ് നോ ദാറ്റ് ദ തൈറോയിഡ് ഗ്ലാൻഡ് ഹാസ് റൈറ്റ് ലോബ് ഇസ്തമെസ് and a left lobe so when we say thyroidectomy it could either be hemi thyroidectomy or total thyroidectomy so hemi is one side plus the isthmus while total is you take off the whole gland you know it's both the lobes as well as the isthmus so when do we do hemi when do we do total so hemi is done basically in benign cases or you know what i mean is the non cancerous conditions where you have any lesion or uh, any uh, t- uh, tumor in one side you know tumor what i mean is you know uh, anything which is non cancerous when do we do total this is a broad classification total is more mostly done when you have lesions on both sides of the gland or we we go in for total mostly when it's when there's a cancerous lesion so how do we go about this total and hemi what are the things that anybody should know when they are going to go in for a surgery so first thing is post op what happens in post op see there's something called the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is very close to the thyroid gland so when we are going ahead with the thyroidectomy whether it's hemi or total whatever it is sometimes when we have to take the gland we tend to touch or we have to kind of Uh, remove the thyroid gland from the nerve which is sticking uh, very close so you might get a very uh, you know uh, you might get a little bit of hoarseness of voice which is temporary and which gets to normal after some time so this is one thing a slight change of voice or hoarseness of voice this is due to two nerves the one is the ebsln nerve or the rec- rln or the recurrent laryngeal nerve so any it might not be an injury even you know handling of the nerves can cause a little change of voice so that's one thing that people should know this is a very temporary one the next thing is there are four glands which are behind the thyroid gland known as the parathyroid glands you know para is behind so para is close or whatever so it's behind the thyroid gland so four parathyroid glands so when we are trying to take take the thyroid gland there might be definitely a handling of the parathyroid glands and what these parathyroid glands do is they control the metabolism of calcium in the body so once you handle the parathyroid glands they might again have hypocalcemia or what i mean is low level of calcium in the blood this is also a temporary phenomenon that happens and recovers with time so that's the second thing that post operative period the a uh, patient should know which is these conditions will uh, you know kind of get better with time the next thing is the wound which we have either you can go in for an open or an endoscopic or now we have the robotic as well whatever it is the wound healing matters there might be a little of you know the suture should uh, you need some time for the suture to heal well so that and then usual bleeding uh po- not post operatively intraoperative bleeding which which is all part of the wound healing process so these are the main things that comes along in the post operative period in thyroidectomy so when when or who are the patients who be going for thyroidectomy as i said one thing is any swelling in the thyroid gland you know one thing is the thing is it could either be for a cosmetic re- reason some people do not want to have any even a small swelling in the thyroid gland so they go in for cosmetic reasons the other is pressure symptoms what do i mean by pressure symptoms it's like either you might have a dif- you know difficulty in breathing a choking sensation or in difficulty in uh, uh, swallowing you know you, some people complain of a difficulty in swallowing food so these kind of pressure symptoms due to the thyroid gland then we go in for a thyroidectomy the the other thing is any cancerous lesion then it's a must that we go in for thyroidectomy because that is the first line of treatment 
or another thing is a long standing goiter goiter what i mean is the swelling of the thyroid gland because a long standing one has a little chance of turning into malignancy later so any long standing goiters also we tend to go in for surgery so these are the conditions where people will be subjected to thyroidectomy so next what do we do after a thyroidectomy what ha- what should the patient do the first thing is i said i talked about the post operative period once everything is done the suture is removed and the pathology report comes as a non cancerous lesion then the patient will be put on thyroxin replacement therapy you know what i mean by thyroxin replacement therapy is we have taken a part or the total thyroid gland so we replace the hormone that is needed for the body so once we put on thyroxin therapy they need to be on follow up you know a regular follow up depends on your consultant initially it is like 4 to 6 weeks just to stabilize the hormone levels in the body and then it becomes once in 3 months once in 6 months and then once in a year so when do we take this thyroid tablet it's usually once a day in the morning in empty stomach when i mean empty stomach it means that i that the patient is best not to take any coffee tea or breakfast for a period of at least 45 minutes after taking the dose of thyroxin so the so i would recommend taking the tablet first thing in the morning as soon as the patient gets up and then by the time you know he does his regular routine it will be time for his tea coffee and breakfast so that's how the thyroxin tablet is taken so next is this is about benign so now when we come if in case the patient has a cancerous lesion so what do we do so after a total thyroidectomy the next thing is whether the patient needs a supportive therapy like a radioactive iodine ablation or any other thing so once even that is finished then we will put the patient on thyroxin therapy and maybe thyroxin suppressive doses depending on what he has so then the routine comes is the same the patient will have to be on follow up therapy but in addition to the uh, thyroid levels he will have other things which needs to be done like ultrasound of the neck and thyroglobulin measuring and uh ceea measuring or calcitonin measuring depends on what cancer he has so the uh, the the like the follow up should be for a minimum of you know 5 years to life long depends on you know uh, the whatever the pathology report comes as so this is the follow up that is done for a patient who has had thyroidectomy and of course he will have other uh investigations to be done like you know a whole body scan or a ct chest or whatever depending on uh whether the uh, patient has any recurrence or metastasis so how do we now uh okay now i've talked about thyroidectomy the post or immediate post operative period and the follow up of the patient so now how do we uh what can be done to prevent these thyroid disorders before that we will go into what is what are the what is the array of complete uh, thyroid disorders that usually are found so one is you know i uh, the patient can present with a swelling in the thyroid gland which is like goiter which is called as goiter goiter is nothing but a swelling in the thyroid gland so that could be either a diffuse swelling or that could be nodules so this goiter could present as hypo hyper or u u thyroid what i mean by this is either the levels could be low the thyroid levels could be low the thyroid levels could be high or it could be perfectly normal anything and these once this physiological thing uh, you know aspect has been investigated the next thing that you need to is, uh, investigate is what is the lesion about or what is the pathological uh, lesion about you know when i say pathological whether it is cancerous or non cancerous okay when is non cancerous it could be a simple nodule a colloid goiter or it could be thyroiditis which is very common now in india especially in south india when i say thyroiditis what i mean is it is just inflammation of the thyroid gland okay so this is these are few of the uh, non cancerous lesions that are present in the thyroid gland 
when i talk about cancer of the thyroid the most common one is the papillary cancer thyroid and then you have the follicular you have the medullary you have the lymphoma you have the anaplastic and the treatments accordingly will be done okay so this uh, comprises the whole uh, disorders that are present so when do when does thyroid disorders occur it could be any time any time from birth you know congenital or it could be like during puberty especially for women puberty any time which is like stressful puberty pregnancy old age there's cancers and uh, you know when the mother is pregnant especially you need to kind of investigate her thyroid disorder because it could be transferred to the fetus so it it is like something that is present that could occur any time from birth up to death so it is like it's a full full array of disorders that are present so now uh, how do we go about uh, uh, you know how do we try to prevent more than prevention what is the best lifestyle that is needed as usual the first the best thing is your good diet vegetables and you know your your iodized salt which is already you know prevalent in the whole of india because more the salt that we have is iodized as such then uh, you have uh, if you're a non vegetarian you could take a good non veg diet and then yes a good lifestyle in the meaning like exercise yoga meditation all this helps in having a good thyroid gland 